For the record, I have no personal stake in this most recent controversy between the Harry Potter legacy game, the trans community, and J.K. Rowling. My opinions on this matter don't really mean anything in the grand scheme of things, but I do care about trans people, I don't condone violence and doxing people online or otherwise, and I also love me some Harry Potter. So I suppose what I can't offer to anyone interested in listening is a third-party perspective with maybe a solution? Hey you, welcome to Day Day Does, a channel where you basically watch me draw and talk about fandom slash storytelling things. Y'all, what's going on with this new Harry Potter game is wild. I know it's supposed to be this pinnacle of game making and such a boon for us Harry Potter fans. Personally, I'm not a gamer, but I love the gaming world because I get to watch Let's Plays, which allows me to feel like I am playing video games, enjoy certain fandoms and IPs with my friends who are gamers, and immerse myself further into the nerd pop culture ecosystem. It's just so fun to be a part of something with everyone else, especially if it promises to be a good time. And Hogwarts Legacy was supposed to do that. Ideally, it it was supposed to come with no drama or scandal way back when, but with the revelation of J.K. Rowling supporting harm towards the trans community, everything feels kind of tainted, at least for me. I am not trans, therefore I cannot speak on the trans perspective in this equation, as it's not my place and my voice could never do it justice. I can link some videos of those who are, and if you would like to hear their take and opinion on this most recent controversy, I am also not J.K. Rowling or someone affiliated with her, so I cannot give you her side or her opinion as I can't relate and have no clue what goes on in their heads. I am however, a huge Harry Potter fan, a former JK Rowling fan, an appreciator of human beings in all shapes, colors, and identities, and most importantly, an outsider. So here's my two cents. Be sure to tap that subscribe button down below and give it that magical little touch of love, or non-magical if you're into that. JK Rowling's blatant disregard and disrespect towards the trans community is wrong. Her opinion is rooted in fear, misinformation, willful ignorance even, and just plain being mean-spirited towards human beings who just want to live and be different. I never understood the targeting of people and just being hateful towards someone just trying to exist. I used to be such a huge JK Rowling fan when I was starting my journey into becoming an author. Her journey to success was what motivated me into publishing my writing. And as someone with a lot of Capricorn in their birth chart, I'm a huge sucker for a rags to riches story. And JK Rowling's story ticked all of my boxes. A woman who had always had a dream to write and have her story published, from struggling to live in poverty as a survivor of domestic abuse and a single mother, eventually end up making it big by writing her story, the one that she believed in until the end. As a result, she was able to support her daughter and eventually marry and live happily ever after. And as an older sibling who feels like I have to take care of my entire family financially, that level of responsibility really struck me. As someone who dreams of her stories reaching a wider audience and sustaining her herself financially off it, Rowling's tenacity in not giving up struck me. Finding that happily ever after after feeling like maybe it wasn't meant to be, that shit only renewed my faith that anything can happen. I found Rowling so inspiring and so damn talented because she made it big on the impossible and I wanted that. But just because Rowling has it all doesn't mean she is excused in using her newfound influence to hurt, disrespect, and encourage terrible behavior towards other people. That shit is foul to me and makes me so angry that someone who I thought understood stood and stood for the disenfranchised turned out to be just someone who didn't care. And that was my fault, I suppose. Lesson number one of parasocial relationships. Never put your idols and celebrities, influencers on a pedestal. They are humans just like us. They make mistakes. They can sometimes be selfish, awkward, not as eloquent or quick-witted or as extrovert as some. And that's okay. We shouldn't assume or idolize and create fantasies of people because we don't know them. Celebrities, idols, influencers are vastly different people online than they are in real life. You are the ones that keep it authentic everywhere. At the end of the day, they're just curating an image to fit their brands and businesses. It's false. We'll never truly know who they are based on their words. Actions will always speak loudest, and that's a lesson I knew, but still fell victim to when it was discovered that J.K. Rowling was not as open-minded as I originally thought. Everyone is different, and so long as they're not doing anything illegal or hurting anyone or oppressing others, then they're just living. Obviously, there are some behaviors that are not okay, such as bullying, violence, hate, harassment, and also condoning said behaviors that people need to be held accountable for. And as a believer of karma and that the truth will always out, I have no doubt in my mind that Rowling either 
either is facing or will be facing the consequences of her actions, or words in this case. Because I full-heartedly believe that there will always be consequences to your actions and words. Funny enough, JK Rowling recently went on a podcast and spoke further about her opinion on the subject and her fall from grace, which every time I see an article about Rowling further commenting on the subject, she makes it so much worse because she's not a professional expert or someone who has lived as a trans and non-binary person, therefore has no stake to be framed as the be all end all opinion. She can comment on her fall from grace and experience as a cishet woman, but it's not going to make the situation better, especially when she doubles down on the problem that got her where she is now and still doesn't understand the point. Now this podcast, The Witch Trials of JK Rowling from Barry Ways, I think I'm pronouncing that, um, by the Free Press is set to be released February 21st. So that is technically today as I'm recording this. We'll see when this actually uploads, but I will be listening to that podcast because I just want to get more context and just see what else this woman could possibly say that she thinks will justify her. I'll also add that it's quite impressive that near the entire cast of Harry Potter themselves has spoken against JK Rowling's tweets and comments and essay. Like they all have stakes in this franchise and even they are opposed to what she's become or may have always quietly been since the start. So to reiterate, JK Rowling's opinion is dangerous, misinformed and hurtful, especially because it harms real people. There's no disputing that. It's a fact she's in the wrong in this situation. That brings me to the crux of this video and the big kerfuffle that surrounds the new Harry Potter game, which is, are the individuals requesting everyone boycotting the Hogwarts Legacy game because of Rowling valid? Should we be boycotting and turning away our attention, time and energy and financial resources from this game? Are the people who are still wanting to play the game transphobic? Is there no ethical way to consume this game? Why or why not? In my opinion, in an ideal world, yes, we should all boycott this game and hold people liable for directly supporting JK Rowling's bank account. 100% no hesitation. Because in this ideal world, people know better. And these people that do bad things are bad people on purpose. Not to mention the consequences to people's actions and words would also be something that can be seen immediately. Sadly, this brings me to... Unfortunately, with reality, with the type of world we live in, a boycott of that magnitude is a hard sell. Not because it can't be done, but because it won't be done. Allies and trans individuals who are black and white in this topic have every right to boycott and ask others to boycott. Honestly, it's not the end of the world to not buy the game. It's a small sacrifice for many. However, where I disagree is accusing people of being transphobic and hating on the trans community because they chose to play the game or not boycott. This extreme harassment towards streamers and people playing online, the curation of a hate list and sending trolls their way to threaten and harass will not solve the core issue at hand. It's hypocritical and perpetuates everything these supposed individuals hate from JK Rowling herself. Instead of helping the cause, they're harming it and those that do want to help find that they can't, which harms the trans community and gives fuel to right-wing conservatives who will use this incident to further slander the trans community and the trans issues at hand. Honestly, as a means of sticking it to Rowling, boycotting is a star. I do agree that going after her financially is the best way to ruin someone, but considering how far reaching and entrenched the Harry Potter franchise has become into the nerd pop culture, especially since it has reached the streets as they say, and is gaining a whole new demographic that hadn't previously enjoyed the bliss before the downfall, it's going to be a difficult climb. Boycotting a franchise would be impressive to see, but realistically, it won't work. If Chick-fil-A is still kicking after the terrible people they support monetarily, Harry Potter will too. There's no realistic way to prevent people from purchasing the game or consume Harry Potter ethically to stop Rowling's influence because her influence has already permeated our culture so deeply. One single game won't make the substantial difference that people want. One can definitely try, but to truly affect Rowling, everything Harry Potter has to either go or be tarnished in such a way that she can't recover from. And when I mean everything, I mean the entire Harry Potter franchise, including dismantling the Universal Harry Potter theme parks in Orlando and in Hollywood, preventing the streaming of the Harry Potter movies featuring our favorite actors and actresses, stopping publication of all seven Harry Potter books, sequels, and whatever else Rowling writes, discontinuing the merchandise, and further slandering the Harry Potter name in social settings. Only then will the Harry Potter IP no longer be financially viable for Rowling. I point all this out not to discourage anyone's ethical consumption, but to give a bigger picture and take a step back from getting mad 
at joeschmo57 for commenting that they'll be purchasing the game. If we got mad at every similar comment and lambasting streamers who aren't even the real culprits of this nightmare, our blood pressures would be entering dangerous levels. Like, do y'all have any idea how many companies and people similar to JK Rowling were unknowingly supporting? An example would be if I had to blacklist every individual who supports anti-immigration laws and the horrors happening in the borders down south of the United States, because that would include a lot of people and family members because everyone supports something or someone that does their best to work against immigrants, whether they're aware of it or not. Some people don't even realize that by being passive and doing nothing about politics or refusing to vote in their local emphasis on local and national elections are contributing to anti-immigration laws being made that affect millions in the United States. The same goes for gay rights issues. Companies like Chick-fil-A donate to politicians that make laws against their right to exist, and yet a ton of people, you know who you are, still buy from Chick-fil-A, including the gays themselves. Walmart is another problematic company. Hobby Lobby is another conservative company that supports anti-progressive laws and lawmakers. Nestle is another company that is horrible for selling water for exploitative prices to developing countries lacking drinking water and many other things. Nike, Coca-Cola, Amazon, and many other companies that do terrible damages to vulnerable minority groups everywhere by supporting the same legislation JK Rowling does. Hell, Hollywood itself is responsible for the perpetuation of racism, keeping to the status quo, and causing harm and abuse towards women, minorities, children, and those in the queer community. I am not pointing this out to shame anyone, but to illuminate that the world is nuanced and putting social ultimatums isn't going to solve or give the desired results that we want. Ethically consuming anything in this capitalistic society is like stepping on a landmine, and unless you become Amish, there's just no way to realistically do that. You can certainly try, but not doing so comes across hypocritical if we're biting off people's heads for liking Harry Potter, and in the same breath not doing anything about Disney or going after CEOs and board members whose participation in atrocities is just as bad, if not worse. The violent vocal few who threatened and condemn in the name of social justice are not doing the trans community any real favors and in turn are just taking away the spotlight and overshadowing the real cause, which is that trans people are hurting and need support any way that can be delivered. Ideally, it'd be great if we can turn our backs on Harry Potter period, but as it stands, there just needs to be a better game plan. Personally, I think someone else creating a bigger franchise that permeates our culture and dwarfs JK Rowling's influence and work is a viable option and a fun one too because it creates more stories and safe spaces for people to enjoy. Some examples would be The Worst Switch by Jill Murphy. There is a series now available on Netflix, by the way, Owl House by Dana Teres. I'm so sorry if I mispronounced that. The Percy Jackson series by Rick Riordan and so much more. Which brings me to... Unless she murders someone or her reputation gets tarnished to a degree that there's just no coming back from it, sadly, J.K. Rowling will just end up among the many writers who have prolific works that are considered classic but are just terrible people inside and no one does anything about their IPs and estates to this day. Examples being Orson Scott Card, author of Sci-Fi Ender's Game, who's a known homophobe and racist, Dr. Seuss, who was a closeted racist in his early days, don't know if that's changed in his later years, but the imagery is still there. Dickens famously slandered his wife in the media to shack up with another woman the same age as his daughter. H.P. Lovecraft, author of The Call of Cthulhu, with a massive cult following, is a racist and anti-Semitic individual. Road Dahl, I think that's how you say the name, I could be wrong, author of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, James and the Giant Peach, and more works, is another known anti-Semitic, racist, and misogynistic person. There's just many more writers with problems problematic past, and I would love to cover them in another video so we can open that discussion of separating the art from the artist and if that separation really works, and whether we should even consume their content in this modern era. Now, we can definitely try to minimize, say, Dr. Seuss's work, but I'm not going to accuse someone reading or buying Dr. Seuss as being racist or a supporter of racism. I'm not going to accuse people reading The American Dirt by Janine Cummings of being anti-Latine for supporting someone who culturally appropriates stories that aren't her own and profiting off of them, which is a fascinating video topic for another time. The same goes for JK Rowling's content as well, at least in my opinion. I'm not going to encourage or send a mob of hate towards people. One thing I will not stand for is doxing others for existing or disagreeing with you. And honestly, a lot of trans influencers themselves don't condone the bullying and extreme threats towards others as well. The best way to support the trans community is to listen to their perspective, to their stories, and what they have to say. To educate people, be open-minded, live your life, and influence others 
others through actions and trying to make changes, if you can, on a larger political scale. Personally, I know in my creative original projects that I publish, my cast of characters will always be inclusive because the era of default is over for me. I want to consume and make content that adds value to our lives and just not maintain the archaic status quo anymore. Like, I'm seriously done with that. I just want to see so much more than what was allowed when I was growing up. It's a hard journey, but not an impossible one. Any hoodles, I believe that is it for this video. There's not much more I can say aside from the fact that I will be trying to de-influence JK Rowling from my life and not support her monetarily to the best of my abilities. If you can't do so as easily, I'm not one to judge. If you're being a hateful person on purpose towards the trans community and people in general, then rest assured, karma will get you. I will be linking sources to various articles in the description box below that talk about what's going on so you sparkling individuals can be better informed and form your own opinion. My artwork in this video will be posted on my Instagram and DeviantArt. In the future, I really want to make like a separate website for my art and offer any prints if anyone is brave enough to want one. So I'll let you know when that will eventually be debuting. Thank you so much for watching everybody. And be sure to tap that subscribe button if you want to be a part of my tame gang gang. Can't guarantee that we'll do anything too spicy up in here, but hey, it's a living. Thanks for watching this far, y'all. Remember to be kind, but don't take no shit. Until next time, cheers.